Now, if you've taken trigonometry before, or if you're studying trigonometry right now, this should be a very easy question. And the question is the following, how many radians is 60 degrees? Now, if you're looking at this question and you're saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't even know what a radian is. Well, that is perfect because I can qu uh, give you a quick introduction to this topic and I'll show you exactly how easy it is to convert our degrees into radians. But first, I'm gonna give you a full opportunity for you to solve this problem and try not to use a calculator. All right, so 60 degrees is how many radians? Well, if you know the answer, put that into the comment section. Then of course, I'll tell you what a radian is and how to do this problem. I'm also gonna give a uh, bonus tip at the end of this video for those of you that are trigonometry students, and you might be taking trigonometry uh, as part of a course like pre-calculus, but you really gotta pay attention to this thing I'm gonna be talking about because you can uh, really get in trouble on your test, exams, quizzes, that type of thing. But uh, I'll get to that at the end of this video. But first, let me go ahead and tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need assistance in learning mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at these two circles here. And uh, hopefully by just looking at these circles, you can already determine what a radian is. All right, let's first uh, look at this circle over here and talk about degrees. So when we measure angles, okay, now here, uh, we just have two rays emanating from this vertex right here. When we measure angles, we kind of think about an angle like this. Well, here is an angle, and then this can, can continue on, and this can continue on, and we're just measuring these angles as it gets larger and larger and larger, right? So, you know, angles kind of, you know, go around or could be formed in a, like a circle, right? Even a straight line is an angle. You might be saying, what are you talking about, Mr. YouTube Math Man? No, indeed, a straight line is 180 degrees. Now, of course, this uh, side can go on and on and on and on and on. So when we uh, kind of study angles, we like to think of angles in terms of a circle, okay? And, uh, you know, when you get into trigonometry, you're going to learn a lot about something called the unit circle, but I think most of you kind of get the idea. Okay, so let's just kind of review how many degrees there are in a circle. And you can see there are 306 degrees if we go one revolution around a circle. Now, if we go halfway around the circle, we have 180 degrees. If we go a quarter or way around, we have 90 degrees. Three-fourths way around, we have 270 degrees. So that is just something that most of you already know is degrees and their kind of, you know, relationship with a circle. All right, now what is a radian? Well, you could see right here, a radian is another way that we can measure angles. Now, the uh, easiest way to just define a radian is that 360 degrees is equal to two pi radians. All right, that's basically it. That is what a radian is. So instead of using degrees, we're going to use uh, these values that include pi. But the main thing that you uh, kind of need to understand is that two pi radians is equal to 360 degrees. So if we go halfway around a circle, okay, uh, that would be halfway around two pi, right? So that's two pi divided by two, which is pi, which of course is 180 degrees. And if we go a quarter way around, we got pi over two, which is the same thing as 90 degrees, and then three pi over two, which is 270 degrees. Okay, so that's basically what a radian is. It's just another way to measure angles. But why are we using pi? Why do we want to use pi here? Um, in radians, like why, why not just stick with degrees? Well, because pi um, has a lot to do with a circle. Matter of fact, the definition or the formula for pi, or the uh, well, let's just kind of um, kind of do it this way. So, what is the basic approximate value of pi? And if you said 3.14, I would say, wow, you are definitely sharp in math today. You would be absolutely correct. But where's this number coming from? 3.14, right? Now, 3.14 is an approximation of pi because pi is something called an irrational number. These uh, uh, digits of pi do not repeat and they do not terminate. It goes out to infinity. So both you and I do not have the time to write out the entire digits of pi. So we just give it a symbol. And this symbol right here represents all those digits. But where is this number coming from? Okay, well, let me go to tell you right now. It has to do something with circles. Okay, so let's say I've had a small, if I have a small circle, 
or a big circle, it doesn't make a difference. If I take the distance around the circle, that's called the what? Well, if you said circumference, I would say you are absolutely right. And then we measure or we divide that uh, distance around the circle by the width of the circle, and that's called what? The diameter. And it doesn't make a difference if we're dealing with a small circle, big circle. You're always going to get the same number over and over again, which is approximately 3.14, which is, is the value of pi. So pi has something to do directly with circles. So that's why it's such a, an important value uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, working with angles as well. Now, there's a better, um, actually a little bit more formal way to introduce radians, but uh, that's just why, you know, well, hopefully this little quick explanation makes some sort of sense. But you might be saying, well, why are you use pi? You know, why is it important? Because pi is such a critical value when we're talking about circles. Okay, so that's effectively what a radian is. Now, let's go ahead and talk about how to convert uh, from uh, degrees to radians. Now, when you study trigonometry, you're going to have to be able to convert from degrees to radians and radians back to degrees. This is not that difficult. And I think uh, if you understand this right here, 2 pi is equal to 360 degrees, and you have some basic algebra skills, you can figure this out. But let's just make it easy on ourselves. And let's go ahead and uh, take this simple uh, example problem. So we know that 360 degrees is 2 pi. Well, what do we need to multiply 360 degrees by to get to 2 pi? Well, again, you could set up a nice, lovely uh, basic algebraic equation, but I'll just spare you all that uh, work and just tell you the answer. The conversion factor is pi over 180. Okay, not 180 degrees, 180. Got to be careful here because we're going, we're, uh, going from degrees to radians. Okay, so pi over 180, let's just go ahead and test this right here. So 360 degrees over 1 times pi over, uh, over 180 is going to be what? Well, here's a fraction. It's going to be uh, 360 or 360 over 1. So 360, and this is, you know, you got to be careful here because a lot of people, uh, you know, forget that you are dealing with a fraction when we're converting units of measure. So this is going to be 360 times pi over 180, and 180 goes into 360 two times, so this is 2 pi. So again, 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi. Okay, so now that you understand what the conversion factor is, this should be quite easy to do to convert 60 degrees into radians. So let's go ahead and take a look at this right now. Okay, so 60 degrees, how many radians or rads uh, is uh, 60 degrees equal to? So all we have to do is multiply by pi over 180. So we'll put this over 1. Again, we want to be thinking in terms of a fraction. So this would be 60 over 180. And of course, I could reduce this fraction. Well, let's just cross cancel the zeros. So that's 6 over 18. 6 goes in 18, 3. That leaves us, as, uh, leaves us with pi over 3. Okay, so again, you know, this is not that difficult, but it's something you are going to definitely need to know. And um, there are some other uh, few things here that you need to know is the uh, radian equivalent for these very uh, common angles. So one of them is 60 degrees. Of course, we know that's pi over, uh, pi over 3. But 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, uh, 180 degrees. Of course, we know 180 degrees is pi. You're going to have to kind of com almost commit uh, these uh, equivalencies uh, to your rote memory. Okay, well, we're going to use your rote memorization. Rote uh, memory just means you're going to be like, you know, using a flashcard. Got If you're taking trigonometry, you're going to be working so uh, much with radians and these values. So pi over 2 is what? Well, that's 90 degrees. Pi is 180 degrees. 3 pi over 2 is 270 degrees. How about 45 degrees? Well, I would just take this pi over 2 and divide it by 2. So that's pi over 4. These values you need to know, okay, 30, 60 degrees, 45 degrees, uh, 90 degrees. Uh, so got to get really comfortable while using radians. All right, so I promised you a little bonus tip here. Very, very important stuff. So let's talk about this bonus tip right now. But first, I'm going to ask you to subscribe to my channel. If you get any kind of value out of my videos, and this is the first time you are checking in, thank you so much uh, for sticking with me to this uh, point in the video. Uh, just um, real quick, on my channel, you're going to find well over 2,000 plus videos from basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. But if you need full on uh, support, okay, of course, you can go to my main website, but I'm going to leave links to my main courses in the description 
of this video. And if you are studying trigonometry, you want to check out my pre-calculus course because I have uh, all the trigonometry you need to understand uh, in uh, in that course. All right, this is a very advanced math course. Okay, oftentimes, uh, so a lot of students, um, at least this has been my experience. Uh, there's a lot of people that actually think pre-calculus is more difficult than actually taking calculus, okay? You'd be surprised about that. So you got to be ready to take this course, and this course generally comes after uh, like an Algebra 2 or College Algebra type of course, and this is where typically most courses contain uh, full instruction on trigonometry. So you can check out um, uh, my course if you need really detailed uh, you know, um, you know, instruction on trigonometry because it does get quite advanced. But let's talk about this uh, little tip I was talking about. Okay, so here is something that I've seen uh, over the years. So here is a lovely little test, and let's call this a pre-calculus or trigonometry test. And uh, on here are going to be questions about degrees and uh, uh, questions about radians and all kinds of stuff like that. Now, you're going to be able to, let's say, use your calculator on this test. So here is your lovely calculator. So what is the problem? Okay, well, here's the deal. Okay, uh, on your calculator, there is, um, and it all depends on what kind of calculator you have, there is a mode button. Okay, now the mode button, okay, basically, uh, well, it, well, it does a lot of different things. It puts your calculator in different mode modes, but... Uh, when it comes to trigonometry, there's two primary modes, degrees and radians. Or actually, you'll see this DEG or RAD, okay? And you're going to have to uh, go from one to the other, all right? So again, when you're in, when you really are taking a full-on uh, trigonometry course or pre-calculus course, you're going to be working a lot with degrees and a lot with radians. You're going to have to do calculations in both um, units of measure. So you're going to have to be switching your calculator from uh, deg uh, from degree mode into radian mode. Okay. Now here is what I have seen. All right. Now decades and decades of teaching. You know, here a, a student will do a prom uh, that has something to do with degrees. Okay. Or the the proms in de in degrees, and they use their calculator. If their calculator's default settings in degrees, and then they go into radiance. They're like, oh, okay, I have a problem here. Uh, has ra uh, you know has to deal with radiance. So they switch their calculator into radian mode. And now the next problem has to do with degrees. But guess what they forgot to do? Okay, if you said, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, did they switch their uh, uh, mode, their calculator mode, back to degrees? No, they forgot. Okay. I'm sure I made this mistake. It's a common mistake. Anyone can make this mistake. But guess what? All this work down here, um, uh, all the answers are wrong, okay? Because they are in the wrong unit of measure, okay? And, and by the way, if you're taking a multiple choice exam, math teachers are telling you they just love to put the wrong answer, uh, assuming that you made this error. So you have to be very, very careful when using your calculator, Okay, if you're going back and forth between degrees and radians, which you will have to, you got to be paying attention. Hey, what mode am I in? Okay, especially, you know, if you're using a calculator on some sort of test or or whatnot. Okay, it just happens all the time. So uh, check that mode frequently. Matter of fact, I would say get in the habit uh, before you even start a prom. If you're go if this if your test or exam quiz doesn't make a difference has both degrees and radians on it, double check, triple check, and just make sure that you are in the right mode because you could be you know, doing all the steps right and coming up with lovely decimal values. Like, yeah, it looks like a pretty good answer to me, but it's you know in radians where you want the answer in degrees. So be very, very careful. All right, so this is going to be a wrap for this video. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.